Russian turtle tanks will soon disappear into oblivion. The Economist. Russian turtle tanks have showed limited effectiveness on the Ukrainian battlefield, but the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, so the Russians will eventually abandon such protection on armoured vehicles. The Economist writes about this. As the authors of the publication note, despite the primitive execution, the very idea of spaced armour, which the Russians tried to implement in turtle tanks, is good and has long shown its effectiveness in military equipment. Spaced armour is a method of protecting a vehicle when there is a cavity between the layers of armour. When the projectile hits the first layer of metal, it is dulled and thrown off course, making it less effective when it reaches the main armour. In the case of cumulative projectiles, the deterrent effect is even more powerful because the cumulative jet loses its penetrating power without even reaching the second layer of armour. The Russian military appears to be hoping that the sheet metal used to cover the tanks will provide similar protection against Ukrainian drones. The drones carry small shaped charges that cannot penetrate even the thick frontal armor of a tank, so operators aim them at more vulnerable parts such as the roof and sides. The shell on turtle tanks, in theory, should cover these vulnerable parts and make the drones helpless, especially if an electronic warfare installation is also hidden under the shell. But the use of such welded on sheet armor has big disadvantages. A very limited view of the battlefield, slowing down the tank due to excess weight, the inability to rotate the vehicle's turret and, as a result, a limited ability to fire. The practice of using skull tanks has shown that they still remain vulnerable and are destroyed on the battlefield. At the same time, at least one case was recorded when a tank got lost due to the crew's limited view of the area. The Economist notes that kamikaze drones have indeed become a big problem for both warring sides, but mounted armor on tanks is an engineering dead end. On board active protection systems such as the Israeli Iron Fist, an airborne mini air defense system that protects a tank from attacks from anti-tank missiles and drones have much more potential. Russia's turtle tank cages may turn out to be something like armor from the late Middle Ages. Although effective against newly invented firearms, their weight made them so impractical on the changing battlefield that they soon became obsolete. The newspaper writes. France sent an army to New Caledonia. The conflict is intensifying. French President Emmanuel Macron has declared a state of emergency in the French colony of New Caledonia. This is a group of islands in the Pacific Ocean inhabited by several ethnic groups, including the indigenous people, Kanaks. The total population of the islands does not exceed 300,000 people. Riots broke out in New Caledonia following an initiative to amend the French constitution to change voting rules in these territories. The amendment, as the indigenous residents of the French colony considered, infringes on their rights. After the amendment was approved by the French parliament, the Canucks went out to protest, which turned into real massacres. The administrative center of New Caledonia, the city of Numia, with a population of about 95,000 people, is engulfed in flames. On the streets, representatives of the indigenous population set up barricades and accuse Paris of colonialism and trampling on the rights of the Canucks. In connection with the events in New Caledonia, French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal spoke. Everything must be done to return to constitutionality, order and serenity. But serenity somehow doesn't work out. The colonial authorities had to bring police and security forces to the streets of Numia and other settlements in New Caledonia. This is about 1,800 people. By the morning of May the 16th, a French force landing in the amount of about 1,200 people landed in Numia to suppress the protests. However, so far, it has not been possible to suppress the Kanak uprising. They burn French warehouses and organize pogroms in the area where the colonial administration buildings are located. The police and military use force. As of now, there are at least six dead and dozens injured in New Caledonia. In essence, the world is dealing with a typical colonial suppression of the rights and freedoms of the indigenous population. However, in the so-called democratic Western community, few people care about this. The Institute for the Study of War has estimated that the Russians have advanced no more than 8 kilometers from the border in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast and intend to establish a buffer zone rather than advance deeper. ISW noted that the pace of Russian offensive operations in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast has continued to decrease after the Russians initially occupied areas that, as now confirmed by Ukrainian officials, were less defended. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Ukrainian military officials stated that Ukrainian forces have partially stabilized the situation in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast, which borders Russia. 
Nazar Valashin, spokesperson for the Kortitsia Operational Strategic Group, stated that Russian forces are trying to achieve tactical successes near the settlements of Lukyansi and Vovchansk to establish footholds for further advancement, but Ukrainian counterattacks, shelling and drone strikes were preventing Russian forces from consolidating in these areas. The Kharkiv Oblast administration representatives stated that constant Russian attacks were preventing Ukrainian forces from establishing fortifications within 3 to 5 kilometers from the border with Russia in Kharkiv Oblast. They added that Ukrainian forces have constructed the first and second lines of defense at distances of 12 to 13 kilometers and 20 kilometers from the border, respectively. ISW estimates show that Russian forces have advanced at most 8 kilometers from the border in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast. The forces operating on Russian territory can easily deliver artillery strikes on Ukrainian defensive positions near the border. However, restrictions on the use of Western-provided weapon systems to strike rear Russian areas across the border make stationary Ukrainian defensive positions near the border vulnerable and possibly defenseless.